position. Item on the agenda is to call the August 3rd, 2023 Metro general election. Um, Mr. Roberts, are there any contingencies there? Can you give us perhaps a short explanation of what could happen between now and then? This, this call would be for the current status, the way that the laws are currently written in the uh, state and the charter. <clears throat> so we would have the 35 council districts, the at-large members, the vice mayor, and the mayor included on the ballot. All right. Make a motion to call the election August 3rd, 2023. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All right. With a motion and a second, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? The motion carries unanimously. Number three uh, is, I'm sorry, uh, number four is to, excuse me, number three is to approve the early voting schedule and locations for the August 3rd election. We've got a uh, item three materials in our file uh, entitled early voting schedule. If we could take a look at it, uh, Commissioner Roberts, could you give us a bit of an explanation on what model we used for uh, this early voting schedule. This schedule reflects the early voting schedules or is modeled after the early, early voting schedules we used in 2015 and 2019. Uh, with the satellite sites having uh, at least one more additional day where they're open, also, um, we have added, we have a total uh, of one more site being open this time uh, compared to 2015 and 19. That's the Y, the Margaret Maddox Y. Uh, right now, we're a little tentative there. We may have to be in a different room than we were for the last election just because of the um, child care type programs that they have going on, but uh, we hope we can get that worked out. Included in your packet, you can see the the dates for the general election um, from 15 and 19, the days that we used. Also in your packet, there's a, a chart in there that gives you numbers for how many people voted, how many people voted early, uh, back for a number of years. So you can get a general feel for how many people vote in this type of election and how many people vote early. Mr. Roberts, is is there a reason that we don't open all locations for all days? I mean, I understand historically in trying to model what numbers that we have, but there is a school of thought that the more open locations you have, the more people will actually vote. Um, I'd like to see all locations open for all days, and I'm wondering why it is that that's not what we do. You know, I think uh, historically what we've... <clears throat> What's our preference is we can open the Howard site, get a little time under our belt running the election. Um, just if we do have any kinks, we can work those out before we open all of the sites. Now, this is totally different during a, a presidential election or another uh, large election like the uh, 2018 midterm, where we knew we were gonna have large numbers of voters turning out, uh, we felt like we had to open all sites. So it's really to um, try to be as prepared as we, we can. But we can be prepared for a large presidential or something where there's a lot of folks without just opening up Howard School for the one day. So is it a cost concern? Do we need more money from Metro Council to open up all locations for all days? I mean, clearly we, we are able to do it and our staff is able to do it and we're able to run an election for all early voting locations for all days. So I would like to see us starting to, to do that for all elections. 
think it would encourage voter turnout and would encourage people to always know where to vote early. Um, I think people get confused when it's Howard School for these days and then everything else opens up for for the rest of the city. My understanding is that some other cities um, offer more than one location for the entire period. Um, and I'm wondering why Nashville doesn't. And I'd like to make a motion that we open all of our early voting locations for all days during the early voting period. <clears throat> so, uh, any uh, other? I just have a quick discussion. question. So if we did that, would, is, we, is, would we back off on the back end? Would we reduce the... I think we need a second first. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'll make a second. second. I'll second the motion. Okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to kick off. No, it's fine. Um, so I guess you're saying if we were to open the other ones on starting on the 14th, would we back three or four days off the back end from the 29th? Reduce it, or are you saying leave it leave it as it is? Leave it as it is, but yeah. open all. So all locations would be open from the 14th through the 29th. Okay. All right. So here's my two questions, probably for or you know for Jeff. So obviously costs that will come from metro government. That's one question, but the other question would be staffing. What does that look like? And I know we're, obviously we're doing it right here, right now. So that's probably something we we'll have to look into. How much, how, let me rephrase it this way. How would you be able to staff all the locations for those extra days? And what does that look like for your office to do so? And then obviously we're spitballing it right now. If so that, if, we're, if we were to say the yes. Yeah, let, let me have John Hyde come up and speak to that. He's responsible for staffing all of our locations, both election day and early voting. Uh, I will tell you that the, the cost to add all of the sites for a day is uh, about $22,000. Morning, Commission. So we would, uh, we would have the workers in place, uh, but as it is right now, we do have some workers that we have trouble getting them to work the full 14 day period, uh, some like a shorter stint. Uh, so there would be a little bit of a hurdle there to, to get all locations on for all 14 days. Uh, but uh, we, like you said, Commissioner, we, we've done it for larger elections. So uh, it would just be something that we would have to adjust for. And John, correct me if I'm incorrect here, but August elections are a little more difficult than one a presidential election. Everyone wants to work the presidential election. August, we do have more people are on vacation and those kind of things uh, during that period. So those kind of hurdles we just would have to plan for. And it's a good thing that we are talking now so that John can get busy to make sure that uh, if, if this is the direction the commission wants to go, we can be prepared. Yeah, absolutely. The sooner, the sooner the better that we know we can plan for it. Um, as you said, Mr. Roberts, uh, the August elections are, you know, people are on vacation, starting school. So sometimes they can pose a problem, especially if there's a runoff immediately after. Uh, and if, again, the next question would be, I would, I would think you were suggesting also 14 days for the September runoff as well. So uh, just all things to keep in mind. Uh, which, which other communities are expanding, and what are their, you know, what what are they, uh, re what results are they are they seeing in terms of turnout? You know, I haven't done an actual study, but um, I definitely heard from a lot of folks after our last election um, that I think Knoxville has more than one location that's open during the entire period. Certainly Shelby does. I think Shelby has dozens of locations that are open um, during the entire period. People seem to, at least the people I heard from, found it out of step that we would do one location for a few days and then open it up to the rest. Um, it just seems to be out of step. It, you know, I, I get it when we were much smaller and, you know, we were a smaller town, but we've grown quite a bit 
Um, so looking at, you know, historical data to kind of arbitrarily set Howard School for, you know, this number of days or that number of days, I think it's confusing to the voter because um, they're not, you know, we say early voting's open and then they're like, wait, it's just Howard School for how many days and, you know, what is that? I think if we can just, I think we've done a very good job of being very consistent about what our early voting locations are, um, you know, when we do a Saturday, that we do late, you know, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and, you know, our hours, we, we've done a very good job, I think, in the past few years of consistently giving a message to voters of when they vote and where they vote and the hours that they vote. And the only thing that seems to be in flux is powered school versus all locations. And I just strongly feel that it's time we just say when it's early voting we're all open um, I think Metro Council would have zero problem giving us the money for it I've heard from so many council people that they want to have early voting for the entire period at all locations so I mean I, I can't really see a reason not to do it and I think it does encourage people um, to vote and you know if the numbers don't bear it out the numbers don't bear it out but we certainly should be trying to to make it easier for people to vote and more consistent and um, I'm going to push for that for for this election and for all future elections um, does anybody have any idea of what the results were in our turnouts the last time we expanded early voting I don't but I'm just wondering if that's available if you look at the um, uh, the sheet there probably the it's difficult to say because we we had a total of 13 sites for the presidential election but we had twice as many people vote in the presidential election so I'm not sure if you can correlate exactly the number of people that might vote if that has any relationship to the number of sites we have open earlier the number of days we have open early we just don't have the data to support one side of the or the other of that argument one thing i will remind folks right now we are working with the Y to try to make sure we can be in there. Um, this this might throw a little wrinkle in with them, you know, because now we're talking about even more days that we will be in their location. Uh, we just don't know at this point if, if that's will cause a hiccup or not. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman. Hey. Yes, sir. Oh, well, you know, I, I, I also have uh, been questioned about why we don't open up the early vote sites everywhere early uh, on the very first day. Uh, and those are the, the people that have been asking me about has been council members and also constituents that, that are voters as well. And also we got to look at the pending legislation that's coming up that could change a whole lot of dynamics that would cause some confusion. And, you know, you're talking about legislation that's going from 40 council members to 20. And um, I think it's House Bill 48. And uh, to have the early vote sites, I think we need to take a look at that and make sure that, you know, our, our voting population is is it's adequate serve and I think by opening them up all early it we, we're consistent with with that and it's no confusion as Mr. as Commissioner Hirschfeld stated earlier so I mean I've been asked several times about why the way we don't do that and of course we bring back the data but as Commissioner Hirschfeld said we'll continue to grow and we definitely want to encourage folks to vote and we don't want to say we open up our school first four days and then the rest of them the next day, and let's get them all at one time. I, th I think that's a that's a. I think we need to look at that and see what we can do, and and see if there's any issues mm -hmm. with that. Uh, and I know you talked about the why, and I know that could be a concern because they do have programs going on during the month of August. But I would, uh, I would, my recommendation would be to open up all the sites on the very first day of starting July 14th. 
Mr. Chairman, you had asked about other counties. Uh, the only one that I know specifically about uh, is Shelby County, and they do open all of their sites uh, for the whole period. Uh, that's the only one for I know two, for specifically. Two for two weeks? For the, the uh, whole 14 days. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Um, is there any, as I understand it, the, the public locations, they don't, they can't refuse our being there. Is, but are there are there potential issues there uh, with any of the locations? Well, like like all of our public locations in Davidson County, these are used every day by Davidson County residents. Whether or not we're at the library or uh, the, the other facilities, so they would have to reprogram a little bit to accommodate us for a longer schedule. Okay. Is this the last day we can make this decision or, or do we have any flexibility if, if let's say the commissions had a series of questions for the staff about some of the practical aspects of this? This is not the the last day you could do this. Um, we have put this agenda together trying to get as much stuff behind us and get prepared for the elections coming up because of the potential legislation that might pass that could change things up a little bit. We're trying to get prepared as much as we can uh, at this com uh, commission meeting. If I could make a suggestion, maybe we could vote on it today so we could make those preparations. And then if there ends up being a problem that one of these locations can't accommodate us, we could deal with it at that point. <clears throat> question, <clears throat> question I have is this. And maybe we need to bring John up here, or and this is to you as well, Jeff. Um, I think right now it's more of a logistical issue than anything else. I don't. I would dare say that. I think that's the, probably the biggest concern. Because, um, like I said, if we don't staff it properly, it doesn't matter what you do. Because we want everything everything to be open. I guess the main question I have right now is like, put them going to the chairman's the chair's question. How much time would it take your office to run through the logistics of it? So if we're going to say we're going to have all locations open, knowing that we may have an issue, particularly with the Y that you pointed out, how long do you would you guesstimate, and I do understand it's a guess, that you need to logistically go through it with your staff to make sure we can secure these sites? You know, it, it could be that we can tie that down next week. Um, I think... The, the public sites, the libraries, those kind of places, it it's probably going to be more inconvenience, and the sooner we can let them know of how they need to rearrange their book reading or their seed sharing club or all those kind of things, the better off we're going to be. The, the more time they have to prepare, um, the easier it will be to for them to make it happen. For us, uh, John uh, can come up here. The more time we have to coordinate with the poll officials to get them signed up. And like John said, we have to, the runoff is five weeks after the election. So that's a, getting people to commit to two elections within that time frame. That's a, that's a big hurdle uh, because I don't know when the last time you worked six days a week or 12 hours a day. That's a wear on, I know it is on me, you know, after that period of time, I, I need a little break. So we have to get people up to speed. And if we, if we need to have a, a backup per all those kind of things, the sooner we know that, the better prepared we can be. John, do you have anything you want to add? Yeah, I'll just say, you know, early voting starts uh, 
three weeks exactly after the August election. So the September early voting schedule is three weeks after uh, exactly. So it's a very quick turnaround. And um, we have an early voting uh, session for our early voting officers next Wednesday at our offices. So, you know, we were hoping to prepare them and give them a schedule that they can kind of go ahead and start marking their calendar, start communicating with their workers uh, to, to kind of sure everything up. So um, as far as planning, that's on our agenda. And just so that everyone knows, if you work early voting, you also have to work election day. So they're working the 14 day, days of election uh, early voting, then they have to work election day, then they would have to be prepared to turn around three, three weeks later and do another 14 day stint and another election day. So it's all in getting preparation set up. And, you know, if we have people that have, you can imagine, surgeries scheduled and all those kind of things, we have to work that out ahead of time. That's something we do because we do it for presidential elections. But if we're going to do it for every election, the sooner we know, the better off we'll be. So, so are you saying you need a week or a week to 10 days to, to work through those issues? No, I think if, if the commission decided today that we were going to do early voting for the full time period at every site, we would start going through that. If we had an issue at any one of the sites, we would bring that to your attention. We've still got time to work that out. But John would know today when he left this meeting, we're going to need workers for the full 14 pet day period at every site. So for us, the sooner we know that that's the direction the commission wants to go, the better off we would be in being prepared. Okay. And the budget aspects looks like it's what somewhere seventy five, eighty thousand dollars, maybe maybe as high as a hundred. The the budget that we have in front of you, Rick, correct me if I'm wrong, but we have prepared it just in case that's what you decided. So we are good to go at this point. It's a whole lot easier to back money out than it is to add money later. So um, that's the approach that we took. Wait a minute, I'm gonna let me make sure I understand that. So, so what I heard earlier was that to open the sites all the sites for an additional four days would right. cost about twenty-two thousand dollars per day. Correct. Okay, so so eighty-eight thousand dollars. All right, is that much money in the budget right now? That budget money is in the budget that you will vote on today. That those numbers are in there, so that we start off at the bigger number because we had to give those numbers to, as a starting point, to Metro Finance in January okay. as our kind of starting point. So we start there and back away if we need to. So are you saying that you've already budgeted for these four extra days? I'm saying that the numbers that we have put forward right now includes enough funds to do the four extra days. If the commission chooses to go with the schedule that we recommended, we would just back off the eighty-eight thousand dollars. <throat> okay. Have, have you gotten any input? from Metro, either the mayor's office or the or uh, city council? Currently, um, Metro has expressed confidence in the way that we budget and the way that we spend money to the degree that they have not even included us in the budget hearings before the council. 
So to me, that tells us that they feel good about what we put together for them. And if they have any questions, they will come forward and, and ask those questions of us. Right. But I'm, I'm more specific. I'm trying to be more specific because I haven't heard from anybody from city council or the mayor's office saying that they want the additional four days. Uh, I understand that that two of the commissioners have. So my question is, have you specifically heard anything from from uh, Metro, uh, either the mayor's office or the, the city council about the four days that are at issue right here? I've heard nothing from the mayor's office or the, any council members about us, how we put together the schedule for August or September. You know, the, the last conversations I had on the early voting schedule were back in October of 2022. Mm -hmm. So since that time, I've heard from uh, no one in the mayor's office or on council about what we should or shouldn't do. I think they see that as the commission's purview. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other? Yeah, um, I'd like to know what type of issues have we had in the past that we've flushed out, you know, with having the Howard office open, uh, you know, ahead of time. What What are some of those issues that we've we've seen or have been raised or created? Normally, it's something to do with the computer connections the the printers do they talk to the computer sitting on the desk that's that's our biggest issue and we see that usually the first day or two yeah. you know are we going to have an issue where some update was pushed by Metro IT overnight, and now the computer doesn't talk well with the printer. Mm -hmm. it, those are the kind of things that, you know, really drive you crazy if you're dependent on having that application print out and the printer just sits there. That is a problem. If we can get all those things kind of worked out, um, that's better, and that's what we've tried to do when we open Howard first. You know, it's here, Metro IT's upstairs. You know, if we have an issue, we can get those resolved. All the other sites were spread out all over the county. Now, we send one of our staff to each one of those sites on that opening morning just to make sure we can get everyone signed in and up and running and so forth. But um, having been out there and done that, sometimes it's beyond your skill level to actually help. Uh, and you, you may have to start off doing paper applications or those kind of things until we can get up and going. So, okay. But we're able to do it during presidentials and high turnout elections. We can do 14 days without having Howard School open. So we're talking about lower turnout elections for 14 days. I mean, if, if it was such a concern that we needed to work out some kinks, I think we would see those concerns during presidentials and, and higher turnout elections. I mean, what I'm what I'm hearing, and I you know I don't want to overstate it, but it sounds like the money's in the budget. John thinks he can get the workers to do it. There's no objection to it. We haven't heard any actual issues with it. Um, the locations, we haven't heard that there's any actual problems. There's some conjecture about there might be, you know, some inconvenience and maybe it might be a little harder because there might be a poll worker who has surgery, but there doesn't seem to be an actual reason to not open up all sites for an additional four days for for all elections. I'm just, I'm not, I'm not hearing a hard reason not to do it. Um, and I think our, you know, 
our mission, our duty is to encourage people to vote, to make it as easy and regular for people to vote. And I, I'm not seeing a reason not to do it. And when you're balancing it, democracy and letting people vote and availability of that versus conjecture about maybe something else would be easier or there might be a problem, I think we should go with letting people vote more days, more options, more locations. Uh, well, I don't think anybody's questioning the importance of uh, voting in our republic. I think we're just trying to make sure as an election commission we do everything right because if something goes wrong, it's coming to us first. And we've been in enough lawsuits already that uh, I think if we've just taken a few questions to make sure we can do our due diligence because uh, nobody's going to definitely want to restrict the voter from voting. And I'm not really, just to be perfectly on the, rec on the record, I'm not opposed to your idea. I just want to make sure that we have all the bases covered because if we do it wrong, it's us. And so I think, you know, making sure we can cross T's, dot I's, ask logistical questions to make sure we get it done right is uh, what we should do as a commission. Um, what, 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 when is this meeting that you're going to have with, with the, some of the uh, poll officials? Yes, sir. It's next Wednesday morning, 9 a.m. So it's one, one week from today. One week from today. Yes, sir. Okay. If, if we, um, if we had a series of questions for the staff, Mr. Roberts, about things like, you know, what is Memphis's experience has, has, what has Memphis experiences been with this same for Knoxville, if that's what they're doing, um, and making uh, sure that none of the locations are going to have any serious issues with it. Uh, and, you know, anything else uh, that any of the commissioners want to get addressed, uh, would there be any issue with scheduling a meeting uh, before next Wednesday or maybe on Wednesday before, before the meeting with the poll officials to uh, further consider uh, this issue? Because I, I agree it's important and part of our charge is to increase the voter turnout. Um, there, the issue of conjecture has been brought up. You know, we don't know whether this is going to increase turnout. We don't know uh, whether this is going to uh, cause some logistical issues either at the site or with some technology. Uh, but I do think it's an important issue and one that, at least from my perspective, uh, it might merit having a short period of time and then coming back and having a, another meeting about this. Because I, I understand from your perspective, Mr. Roberts, you want to be able to tell everybody as soon as possible so they can start making plans. I'm out of town all next week. I'm out of town all next week. Oh. So, so, Mr. Chairman, would it be an option that uh, the commission uh, approve this contingent on us answering all your logistical questions to make sure that you feel good that we can pull this off. That way no, we can. No, that was that was not my question. My question was, can you get these questions answered for us and then we make a decision? Because I mean that makes sense. Because once we make a decision, then then we're being asked to, to change a decision we've already made as opposed to going into a decision-making process, having the facts before us, having a chance to discuss them uh, among each other as a commission and making a decision as a commission rather than making a decision without having the facts before us. So that's uh, my question was rather... Uh, does that give you enough time and your staff enough time to get the additional information to us so then we can make a decision? You know, I think from our perspective, we, we have to do this and we do it regularly for presidential elections. So whatever we do logistically to get prepared for those elections, we would have to plan to do that 
for every election. If this is the direction that you choose, we would essentially not have the leisure of being able to correct issues at Howard and then fan those out. We would have to make sure that we're good to go at every location um, on the starting day. Now, maybe we can get uh, Mr. Green up here to tell us, you know, is he comfortable from a technology standpoint that we can make that happen? Because that's the biggest issue is from a technology standpoint, can we have all of our ducks in a row to open all the sites for every election going forward? Uh, yes, we can make it happen. As Commissioner Hertzfeld has stated, we do it for presidential. It does increase the workload significantly, but as Administrator Robert said, the sooner we know, the better, because usually the moment the agenda and locations are decided on, the times, I send a notification over to ITS to start the ball moving. I have to then notify the sites that we have to activate their circuitry to get up and running, to go in, do the testing, and check all the devices on the front end. So yes, we can make it happen. We just need to know as soon as possible. Okay. Um... What about, um, Mr. Roberts, what about running these traps uh, this week and the commission having a meeting on a Saturday? Is that possible? Does that give you enough time to check with Memphis, Knoxville, do whatever checking you can do with the mayor's office and city council, et cetera? And, and permit the other commissioners to do the same. Um, is that possible? I mean, we're kind of at the pleasure of the commission here. Whatever you decide, that's what we're going to work with. Mm -hmm. Any other? Mr. Chairman, could, yes, ma'am. I, I think I'm trying to understand the concern because um, we do do this for all other whenever we know we're going to have a high turnout election, or we do it for presidentials. Um, is it a money concern? Is it a staff concern? I'm, I'm trying to figure out what the what the concern is because it seems like the money's in the budget, so I think we can take that off the table. So is is it a location concern or is it that we're not going to have enough poll workers? I guess I'm just, it's adding four days and we do it often. So in this circumstance, I'm trying to, to figure out what is the, what is the actual concern before we all come well, back here on Saturday sure. and, you know, do a whole survey of all of Metro government and figure all that out. I, I just, I'm trying to figure out what the concern is about adding four days when we've done it so flawlessly with um, so many other elections. Well, the actual concern is the actual concerns that have been expressed already, which is that uh, we haven't had a chance to consider the concerns that, that have been raised. Um, but, but what are those? Well, the, the ones that have already been expressed. Do we, have we checked with these voting sites? I mean, I, I don't understand the actual concerns about having a meeting on a Saturday. I mean, we, we, everybody seems to be open to taking a vote now and coming back and reconsidering it. Uh, the concern that I've raised and that I think I've heard raised by other people is why, why don't we actually do our homework on the front end and then take the vote rather than scheduling to come back and reconsider a vote we've already taken? The only reason that we were reconsidering a vote, we're going to reconsider this vote, is because we don't have all the data here today. 
So that's all we're doing is saying, well, hey, instead of instead of taking a vote that we're not all sure of and, and we're going to plan on reconsidering later, why don't we get the information on the front end? I mean, you said that you've heard from all these people. I haven't heard from anybody. Have you? I, I haven't. Well, that's what I'm talking about. Doing that. Doing that. That's a concern. You know, I haven't heard from anybody. I can reach out to some people. If there's a groundswell for this, certainly we want to we wanna be responsive to that. If it's really going to increase voter turnout, absolutely. That's what we're all about. Um, I just think we need to have a basis for our decision other than just, hey, you know, this is... This is Wednesday, let's do it. We've been doing it a certain way for a long time. And there's some degree of consistency there. I, I do think in fairness uh, to the process that some of the commissioners have expressed some reservations. And rather than challenging their motives and asking them, gee, what's your actual reason, it might be better to let some of the other commissioners do some of the, some of their own uh, study into the issue. It's an important issue. I absolutely agree. And if it's going to increase voter turnout and it's not going to create any problems, then I would expect you're going to get a 5-0 vote on it and, and we'll all go forward. But I, I don't think there's anything unreasonable with giving some of the other commissioners a chance to do what evidently two of the commissioners have already done. I mean, that, you're, you're doing the right thing. Uh, we think the rest of the commission ought to have a chance to, to do the things that, that you all have already done. And I don't think there's anything unreasonable uh, with giving the rest of the commission a chance to do that. And, and you know, we've had Saturday meetings before. Um, I, I don't think there's anything unreasonable with doing that. I expect it'll be a short meeting. Um, but but I do think this is an important step uh, and that uh, the the uh, that all the commissioners should have a chance to consider it uh, because you know at least what I'm hearing is three of the, three of the commissioners haven't had a chance to consider this issue yet and it's a it's an important issue and our charge is to to increase uh, voter turnout if we can. And if this is, if, if we think that's gonna do that, then, then s s surely we should do that. Uh, but, but, you know, those are my personal reasons and, and uh, that's what I'm hearing from some of the other commissioners. So I guess my request is uh, to, for uh, the, the proponent of the motion to consider uh, postponing the motion, uh, postponing the vote on the motion uh, for a couple of days until uh, until some of the commissioners can can uh, further consider it and get some additional input from the staff. That's that's my request. I don't think we've ever had this much debate over expanding early voting um, for all days adding four days. I, I, I think it's a bunch of hand wringing over something that I, I, I just I don't quite see the issue with. Um, so I would ask that we vote on my motion. I, I don't wish to postpone it. Um, if you want to call a meeting on Saturday and, you know, reconsider or, you know, do whatever, um, you know, that's your option as the as the chair. And, you know, I, I will do my best to be here. But um, I would like a vote on my motion. Okay. But you are available on Saturday. I am absolutely available on Saturday. I would think it's a shame to bring in the staff and, and make everybody work on a Saturday um, mm -hmm. to, to to do this. But if if that's you know if that's what you want, I, I, I'm, I don't think anybody's requesting all the staff show up for this Saturday meeting. We've had Saturday meetings before, and I don't believe staff uh, has been asked to attend. Mr. Chairman, I'm flying to South Florida for my niece's wedding on mm -hmm. Friday. Okay. Um, could we do the meeting tomorrow and we can, afternoon, and we will work to get all of your answers put together by then? Is everybody available 
Actually. Tomorrow afternoon. Is there enough time to even notice it by tomorrow afternoon? No, maybe not. Uh, no. No. <laughs> What about it's Friday? Enough time, time to notice it for Saturday. Yeah. Well, yes, there is. It's going to be less than 24 hours, so I, it's not really. I don't think it's really reasonable notice. It's so short. Right. Um, I understand. Yes, I agree. 24 hours is not enough. Usually, the rule of thumb is 48. So. What about Thursday? I'm out. Thursday. I'm out all next week. What time are you leaving on Friday? What did you say? Uh, about twelve thirty. What if is it possible to have a Friday? Friday morning. Yes. I have a deposition. <laughs> which is <laughs> which is why perhaps we could just vote it now. And then if there's an issue, we can come back and deal with it. I, I just, I can't imagine there's really going to be an issue. And if there is, I will move heaven and earth to be at a meeting in order to, to help us address that issue. I, I just, I mean, I, I'm come at night for a meeting. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to do it. I just, if we could just move past it. Mr. Roberts, we we have had meetings without you here before, although, you know, we may want to get input from you. Um, let me ask this question. Um, Ms. Eckie, if all the commissioners are at a meeting, can we take input from a staff member over the telephone? Yes, a staff member can okay. provide input. Could you be, if necessary, Mr. Roberts, if we had a Saturday meeting and we wanted to get you on the phone for five minutes or 10 minutes, would, would that be possible? Any, anything's possible. I'm not, I'm not sure of my responsibilities once I get to this wedding. Uh, my brother has not communicated that with me. Um, well, um, okay. It, uh, it's kind of unknown at this point. I mean, he's not going to kidnap you or anything like that. I mean, you're, are you, uh, is, are you? No, can, he, can he's, he's up not going to kidnap me. Uh, he's I, up on the bachelor party, I hope. And, right. Well, you know, hopefully I, he won't have responsibility because it's his daughter. Um, so his big pull will be on Saturday. Um, but, you know, we can we can work to that if, if that's the direction of the commission. Okay. Mr. Chairman, could we do it on Thursday afternoon? Well, I mean, that's tomorrow, though. Oh, that's too, too, that's that's too early. That's, that's too early. Yeah, that's, that's, I think we need 48 hours as the usual rule of thumb. <clears throat> Is it nine? Yeah. It's, I mean, it's remote. It's, it's a remote deposition. So I'm not out of town. I mean, I'm here. If you want to do 8 a.m. on Friday, I mean, I, you know, I, it, it's a shame we can't just meet over the phone. I know that the, the law has changed on that. Um, it was actually very convenient when, when we could do that. I mean, I'm, I'm happy to do it. I also am happy to vote today and be available at the call of the chair um, when we can actually accommodate the schedules of everyone else if there is actually an issue, which we don't know that there would be. And, and I, again, would move heaven and earth to make myself available if there was an issue when we, we needed to, to, to schedule another meeting. 
it's just unclear that there's going to be an issue. So I'd rather just vote it now. And if there's an issue, let's just, you know, deal with it if we can. But, you know, I think I've, I've probably beat that horse to death. Ms. Ms. Eckie, can I ask a question? Could the commission get through the rest of the business here and recess the meeting and then come back together on Thursday or something? We don't adjourn this meeting. Yeah, that's not, you're actually trying to have another meeting another day. So that's not, a recess is usually kind of a short break, like five, 10 minutes. It's not really to wait to the next day to come back and continue a meeting. Well, it's not, I mean, no, my advice is not to do that because I, I don't think that's really uh, consistent with the open <clears throat> meetings law because that will like, actually trying to hold an, another meeting on another day. Um, it's not really uh, that this meeting is going all day, all night, and then continues till the next day. It's just kind of just trying to have another meeting so soon to decide on the matter. So no, I would not advise that. Well, let me ask, here's, let me ask counsel, and I'm asking everyone as well. I do think that Ms. Hertzfield definitely has a legit conversation in question, and I would like to see resolution to it. And as speaking for myself, I do want to do my own homework. I would like to make a few calls, to be perfectly honest. So my question would be this. If we, if we call for a recess, after we, let's go through the rest of the agenda, call for a recess and reconvene later today, would that be within our legal purview to do to and to make sure we can handle the discussion? So I'll, I'll just jump in just to kind of amend your question. I, I wonder if we could maybe just have Mr. Height make a couple telephone calls while we get through the rest of the agenda and perhaps he could clarify some of that. We could take a break for, you know, 15, 20 minutes. You all can make the telephone calls that you feel like you need to and see if that's adequate. I, mean, I can't see that there's an issue with us taking a 15 minute break during a meeting. Uh, it might take longer than that, but my, that's my whole point. It's just the issue of my whole issue at this at point in time is due diligence more than anything else, to be perfectly honest. Um, for me, I can't speak for anyone else. I can't speak for any of the commissioners. So that's why I'm asking, is that an option? So let me just ask legal counsel if that would be an option. I think the way this was noticed that this is supposed to be an 8.30 a.m. meeting, I think it's reasonable to have a break, like 15, 20 minutes. But I think trying to have a meeting at 4 p.m., that's really... Uh, that's not encompassed in this notice that was provided because it's not, you know, uh, it, it, it's more than just having a break. It's really having another meeting at another time because um, it's not reflected in the notice that was given. So my recommendation is to have a, a break and then, um, you know, resume, but not to say we'll come back at 4 p.m. because that's, not really, I don't think the notice reasonably informs the public that this was gonna be the nature of this type of meeting okay. today. I'm happy if Mr. Height wants to start making some telephone calls while we get through the, the rest of the agenda. And if, if you all would like to take a, a comfort break that could last, you know, a bit. Um, you know, I'm, I'm happy to do that. I'm, I have complete availability today, so I can stay here and, you know, to lunch if that's what you'd like to do. I mean, I'm, I'm happy to do it. Of course, there's no guarantee we'll be able to do what we need to do, but, you know, I, at least the chair has no objection to taking a break and, and uh, you know, we remain, however, under the rules and we can't deliberate or speak among ourselves about that, about this issue uh, so that, but we can make some phone calls and do some due diligence. But I, I, at least for me, I can't guarantee that 15 or 20 minutes is going to, is going to uh, be satisfactory, but we can give it a try. Yeah. Yes, Commissioner Starling. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, I, I just, I want everybody to know it wasn't 
myself going out seeking uh, any information about these early vote sites. They actually came to me. So I didn't really do any research. This was people, voters, and elected officials coming to me about the changes of this. Yes, I, I absolutely understand. Yeah. Uh, so are we are we to be in recess? We can, or we can, you know, go through the rest of the agenda. However, you want to, however, you want to deal with it. Uh, I would suggest we take a recess now because if okay. we make phone calls, we may not hear from anybody, okay. and then maybe it may be we're going to have to have another recess. But okay. but if we can take a recess now, if everyone is agreeable to that, that sounds great. All right, mm -hmm. thank you. A, a motion and a second concerning the uh, early voting schedule and locations for the August 3rd election. Uh, I, I have done some homework, but, but I can tell you I do not have, I've not completed my homework. So at least the chair is not ready to vote. Um, it's possible by the end of this meeting, you know, I may get some additional information, but the chair is not ready to vote on the pending motion. Um, basically, I, I would second that. I said, as uh, we took the break, I made a few phone calls and a lot of my phone calls went unreturned, literally. Um, so, my, as a, to use your vernacular, my homework is incomplete. So, you know, if we want to push the vote off until the end and maybe, you know, somewhere between the folks finishing the agenda and maybe our calls get returned, mm -hmm. you know, that would be willing to vote then. But if it was the vote was called now, it'd be interesting. Okay. I, I don't have any issues with voting. Uh, I'm okay. happy to do that, or we can wait until you guys get through your right. due diligence and homework and then uh, vote then. I'm okay. Uh, the, the chair requests that we postpone the vote and take it up later in the meeting if, if at that time we may be able to vote. That's fine. All right. Okay. All right. The next item on the agenda is item four. Uh, it relates to scheduling the locking of provisional ballot security bags, boxes, and absentee ballot security bins for the August 3rd election. Uh, Mr. Roberts, could you briefly explain basically what that is and why we're setting a date for that? Essentially, we need, essentially we need two commissioners uh, that have the keys to the bags and the boxes to be available to lock those and place the seals on them um, on this date. That would be our preferential date, but we can work with that. All right, and that's so, so under the law, there needs to be one Republican commissioner and one Democrat commissioner to work in tandem to lock and provide the security for those bags and boxes. Yes, sir. Okay, all right. Um, it, is there any issue with the dates that have been supplied? Yeah. Okay. So I, I am out of town the 12th through the 22nd. Um, I'm happy if the 20th is the date I can pass the keys to uh, one of you guys for handling that, or we can push it the following week. I'm back and could do it then unless that's too late. I think we're fine with pushing it the, the following week if if that would be best for everyone. That's that's best for me. So do you have a specific date that, that I, works? I can be flexible on next that following week. Yeah, so now I'm fine with moving it a week. I'm no problem. So the twenty seventh? That that's that's good. At nine o'clock. Nine o'clock the twenty seventh is good with me. <clears throat> okay. do, do we have a motion to that effect? I make the motion. A second. A second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? With no opposition, the motion carries. 
Uh, next, we have the schedule for the absentee counting board for the August 3rd election. The suggested date by the staff is August 3rd at nine o'clock in the uh, Green Hills room at our office out near the airport. Uh, any, any questions or comments concerning that issue? Make a motion to set. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? With no opposition, the motion carries. The next item on the next item on the agenda is item six. That is to schedule the opening of provisional uh, bags and boxes for the August third election. Um, Mr. Roberts, could you just give us a brief explanation of what that is and why why that's being scheduled? So the provisional. Counting board, yeah, we're talking about number six, correct? Yes. So the provisional bags will come back from all of the election sites on election day uh, that evening. The next day, we would need the commissioners with the keys to be present to unlock those bags so that we can then begin work on the provisional ballots that have been cast. All right. And so under law, a Democrat commissioner and a Republican commissioner uh, either personally or supervise the opening of, of those provisional bags and boxes. That's correct. All right. Uh, August 4 at 9 o'clock has been suggested. Uh, is there any problem with the, the two commissioners? Okay, uh, that date That's looks fine. good. Do we have a motion? Make a motion. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. With a motion and a second, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? With no opposition, the motion carries. Item, item seven is to schedule the provisional counting board when it will meet uh, following the August 3rd election. And Mr. Roberts, could you just briefly explain to the audience what that is? So once the provisional uh, ballot bags are open and the staff do the research on determining whether or not a voter is eligible, this information will then be provided to the provisional counting board and they will actually count the ballots. Okay. And so if I have it right, there are two... Democrats and two Republicans that do that. There's teams of two and two, depending uh, depending on how many provisional ballots there are. But so two Democrats and two Republicans have to look at those provisional that ballots and, and then they make a decision on whether they're to be counted. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. And that's been suggested for August 10th at nine o'clock. Are there any questions about this issue? I'll make a motion. All right, uh, we have a motion. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? With no opposition, the motion carries. That brings us to, sure. yes, sir. Uh, we do have to uh, be there. Two commissioners have to be there. Correct. Have to on that to unlock and square the counting board. Yes, absolutely. Is, and is that, uh, is that, agreeable with your schedule yes. and yes. Mr. Evans is that agreeable with your schedule yes sir, yes, sir. thank you <clears throat> all right then next is item eight on the agenda that is to schedule the meeting to certify the August 3rd election that's been suggested for August 10th at 3 30 are there any issues or questions about that suggested setting Mr. Chairman, just so that you, everyone understands the urgency of why we need to quickly do this, early voting for the runoff starts August 25th. So we have a lot of work to do as far as preparing the ballot of the certified candidates mm -hmm. uh, to be prepared for the September runoff. Okay. If there's no questions, is there a motion? There's a motion. 
We have a motion to set the uh, date to certify the August 3rd election as August 10th at 3.30. Is there a second to that motion? Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? With no opposition, the motion carries. Then item nine on the agenda is to call the September 14th, uh, 2023 Metropolitan Runoff Election. Um, and of course, depending on the results of the August 3rd election, there may be the necessity for a runoff. Any issues or questions with that setting? It's set, right? I mean, it's. I think right. there's a short right. there's a it, short it, window. Determined by the charter as to when it has to be, we worked with Metro Legal to con to confirm that date. So uh, that is the date that we need to actually uh, call the the election for. So, it, okay, is that on a Thursday, uh, or do we know? Yeah. Yes, it's on a Thursday. Okay. Now, isn't there a window, or is it? Does it have to be a date certain? Is it under law? There, there, is it on there's that a date certain, date? but there is some window depending on when certain religious holidays fall, and we don't have that issue this this okay. time. Okay, all right, okay, but that, but but that is a, a Thursday, which is when we usually have elections. That's correct. Okay. Do we have any flexibility to make it another Thursday? No. I'll, I'll have to defer to uh, Metro Legal, but I, I do not think so. I'll have to. Um, this is what the charter says. Um, I'll actually have to look at the state law because that issue wasn't on my horizon. I don't have the statute in front of me that talks about runoffs and see what it says. But the charter, generally, we follow what the charter says unless there's some kind of conflict. Okay. It, it's fine. It's totally okay. fine. Let's just check it. Sure. Thanks. Okay. I'll call, make a motion to call runoff if necessary, September 14th, 2023. With a motion, do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? With no opposition, the motion carries. Uh, item number 11 is to schedule the locking of the provisional ballot security bags and boxes and absentee ballot security bins for the September 14th election. Um, so that would be that would be a follow up on the runoff and the suggested date by the staff is August 11th at nine o'clock a.m. And then we would need two commissioners there. Uh, is is that agreeable with the commissioner's schedule? We could, could we possibly look at, uh, and of course I know our meetings are here, but locking those on the 10th because we're gonna have an election commission meeting, keep us from having to come back again on the 11th. Are you okay with leaving here and going to our office as opposed to bringing all that stuff down here? Yeah, I, I'm just trying to keep from doing that's two days. I don't, I don't mean, have a problem with that. Yeah, I don't have a problem. And that may be better for the I don't know if it's good for the staff or not. I don't if that. I, I think we can accommodate that, just knowing that, you know, after the commission meeting, we'll go directly to the... Uh, um, office. Keep in mind, the commission meeting is at 3.30 in the afternoon. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I didn't. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. I'm okay with it, but I know that that's keeping staff and working later than they should because it takes an hour or so to lock those boxes. Those bags. I'm okay. Let's just keep it at the level. I'm, yeah, I'm flexible either way. Yeah. I just didn't want to hold staff. I, I think the 11th would be best because they're going to be staying late if they have to do it on the 10th because we won't get to the office until yeah, 5 o'clock. Yeah, the traffic, yeah. Right. And, and, and that's fine. 11th's fine. I was just trying to save a day. That's it. No problem. Do we have a motion on uh, setting 
the locking of the bags and boxes. I'll make motion. August 11th at nine o'clock. Yes, sir. All right, with that motion, do we have a second? Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? With no opposition, the motion carries bringing us to item 12 to schedule the absentee counting board for the September 14th election. The date suggested by the staff is September 14th at nine o'clock. Are there any questions or issues about that? And again, I believe we'll need two commissioners there to swear the absentee counting board in. And again, this would be a team of two Democrats and two Republicans to review and count the absentee ballots. I make a motion to approve. All right, we have a motion. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? With no opposition, the motion carries. Item 13 is to schedule the opening of provisional bags and boxes from the September 14th a potential runoff election. The date suggested by the staff is September 15th at nine o'clock. And we would need two commissioners, one Republican, one Democrat available for that September 15th, nine o'clock uh, date. Uh, are, are there any questions or concerns about that setting? Make a motion to approve. Second. I'm good with that. So. All right. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? With no opposition, the motion carries. Next, item 14 is to schedule the provisional counting board uh, in connection with the se September 14th potential runoff. The staff has suggested September 22nd at 9 o'clock. Uh, are there any issues or questions concerning that September 22nd at nine o'clock day? Motion to set. Second. Be before I call the vote, I, I see Commissioner Starling is checking his calendar. It's just. Uh, I'm fine. Yeah. I'm fine. Okay, all right. Uh, we'll then call the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any, op any opposition? With no opposition, the motion carries. The next issue on the agenda is item 15, which is discussion and approval of next year's budget. With that, I'd like to turn that, this over to uh, AOE Roberts for discussion of the budget. Commissioners, in your packet, you have two sheets. They represent our annual operating budget and then the election budget. The election budget reflects the August 23rd, the September 23rd, and the March 24th elections that would fall in next fiscal year. The operating budget essentially is the same budget that we have in the current year. Should the administration and the council vote on additional salary package for employees, they will automatically put that into our, our budget. It's not uh, pre-populated in that fashion. We tried to add a little bit of information to the right of the numbers just so that you can get a general idea of what we spend the money on. Um, and the election budget, it's broken down between early voting and election day, uh, what we would spend. Now, we have mentioned previously that in these numbers, we included enough money to, if the commission chose to, uh, go to all of our sites being open the full 14 days. Uh, we did that because it's easier to put a placeholder with 
Metro Finance of here's our total request. We can come back before that request is actually submitted to the council and adjust it downward if we need to. Adjusting it upward would be a little more challenging. We, we did that because we anticipated that you might have received calls during October of 22, like I and the rest of the staff did as to why we did not have all of our sites open. So just to give you a little history as to what precipitated us putting the money in there and why we wanted to um, put it so that the commission would have an opportunity to go essentially either way uh, and it not present a problem. So that's the budget. I'm happy to ask any questions. We will be asking and have included in our request an improvement budget of $701,000. That's to buy equipment. This, that equipment is to make sure that we can satisfy our equipment needs going into the presidential cycle beginning with the March election. So we'll be ordering 30 more scanners, 60 more ballot marking devices, an additional 100 poll books, and we're adding uh, a new piece of equipment this time to early voting. It will, when you get your white ballot card, before the clerk hands you that, they will stick that card in the printer and it will identify your precinct and ballot style so that when you take it to the mach machine operator and the ballot marking device, you will stick it in. It will automatically bring up your precinct right now. Mm -hmm. And what some of the issues we've had, it, the machine operator has to bring up the right precinct, 178 of those, and the correct ballot style. Some precincts have five different ballot styles. We're hoping this will put us in a better position that voters get the correct ballot and we have fewer errors, human errors, as far as uh, on during early voting. It will also allow the process to move much more quickly. Your ballot style will automatically come up as opposed to the machine operator having to touch the screen and those kind of things. So again, trying to move the traffic through the early voting sites because that's where we traditionally have experienced the largest volume of voters on any particular day. So all of this is trying to get prepared for the 2024 presidential cycle. That's brilliant. Yeah, I love that. Uh, we we think it, 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 it will make a big difference. Yeah. Um, that's the goal here. I've got one question. So in that 700 plus thousand dollars you alluded to, is there, do we have ample spare machines or is, are they accommodated in that number? Or? Right. The, the problem that we're at right now is that for any particular election, we're very slim on the number of spare machines we have because if you think about it, we've increased yeah. by 18 the number of precincts that consumes all of your spare machines. Um, this will put us in a much better position to handle emergencies and those kind of things. That's good. Good. Oh. Could I ask this? If we were to implement this new system and somehow it comes up the wrong precinct, will they be able to manually put the insert or how does that work? Sure. We just like Today, you can have a do-over if something is not correct. That's, that is still available to the voter. So we want to make sure that we've created a system for the voter to give them the most flexibility possible. Everything is 
available, flexible, until you stick that ballot in the scanner, then we can't back up. Okay. Um, what do we call these precinct directors? You know, what what are, what do we call that? What kind of equipment is that? The one, the one, the precinct. So the printer, it's called an activation card printer. So if you view the ballot as a card, it's going to activate that card with your specific information of your precinct and ballot stop. Not you personally, your demographics, but your precinct and your ballot style. Mm -hmm. That way, when you stick it into the ballot marking device, it automatically brings up the correct ballot. It right. doesn't take intervention from a human to right. bring up the correct ballot. How, how many of those are we going to get? 110. Okay. And then who's who's the vendor? Who's supplying this new equipment? It's it's our current vendor is supplying the equipment. So it's ES and S. Right. We we have to make sure that it, we can't introduce a, a new vendor and have mixed equipment. We we have to have all of the same same stuff. Is there, are there any procurement issues? Now, does this have to go through a bid process or anything, or is this? And has this all been approved by Metro Procurement? The way that the current contract was written, we can buy uh, essentially anything that ES&S has with a defined discount. So that was part of the contract when we did the last RFP. Okay, so we're getting a discount? Right. I mean, we're always going to negotiate a discount. We're okay. not going to pay off the shelf. Okay. Um, when do we anticipate getting this new equipment? It would be after the September election. So you think about while all of the equipment is out of the warehouse, we're going to have to rearrange, renumber everything in the warehouse floor because every piece of equipment has a specific home. <laughs> While it's out, we're going to renumber so that when the new equipment comes in, we're already prepared to put it in the right place. And we've got enough room, I assume. There's plenty of room out there for this. We, we've got enough room. The problem is we have to plan for how much room we're in. There's enough room overall, but the way we we're currently set up, we're going to have to tinker with it a little bit. All right. Now, you said after the September election, which is great, but do, uh, do we know when we are going to get it before? That wouldn't, I mean, that's, that's going to be the concern that we, we get it We think it's going to be, you know, uh, in talking with our vendor sometime around the 1st of October. Okay. So you believe we'll have time to implement this and incorporate all this new equipment into what we're doing? Well, if you think about it, the, the new equipment is just, it's not really new equipment. It's just more of the same kind of equipment that we already have, except for the activation card printers. Right. And that would be where we would be focused on getting prepared then between October and March so that we can implement uh, the new process for the presidential primary. Is this a net increase of, I think you said, 30 scanners, 60 ballot markers, and 100 poll books? Is that a net increase, or are some of them, like, becoming obsolete or breaking, et cetera, in the meantime? I would say a majority of this is an increase. You know, when you, let's, t let's take the poll books. We have 800 poll books now. Those are simply tablets that some of you may have. Those have a useful life right. of, you know, four or five years. Right. Um, so you're naturally going to have some failure that you have to replace. This would cover failures that we've already experienced and additional equipment that we need to satisfy the growing voting population in Davis County. Any other questions on that? 
Mr. Chairman, not necessarily on that particular thing. I, I, it's a question on the budget itself. Under the, and, and I know you probably didn't have no way to, to know this, but pending legislation that's in the General Assembly right now could cause additional elections. Have we considered all, and you, once you put this together, you probably didn't know this legislation was coming out, but if we have to have additional elections, how does that affect our budget? Should we have, I guess, some great confidence that we will have additional elections in this fiscal year, we would either update the budget that we have submitted to reflect that need or what might is more likely to happen is that the um, finance department would recognize the potential for our needs of a supplemental at some point down the road and not not go ahead and put the money out there and tie it up but just in case they would have it on their, their radar that a supplemental need may exist. Okay. And, I, you know, I was just concerned, you know, that we didn't have to use our budgetary money now, and then we get to a point that we can't do some of the things that we need to do, like equipment and so forth. Right. I, I think I would view it the same way that when redistricting happened, we, because of the how many changes we had to make, we had to send voter registration cards to a much larger audience. The council recognized that, and when we asked for a supplemental for more money for voter registration cards postage, that, that wasn't an issue. They recognized that was something we had to do. And I don't know if this is in the right order or not, but if this legislation were to pass and go forward, and it, it will create uh, redistricting in Metro. How does that affect us as far as uh, election commission? We, we could very well go from 35 to 20. And is that, is it a cause involved in rearranging all the stuff that we need to rearrange? No, I think, uh, and, and I looked at the, the fiscal note on the bill, and I assume that they, uh, the legislature contacted Metro GIS because it was stated in there that there would not be a cost to redistrict because Metro has its own, you know, they can do it. Uh, they have their own geocoding uh team of staff and they could do that now i don't know that for sure but there was no cost associated on the fiscal note <clears throat> for um the actual redistricting process uh going down to, to 20 council districts yeah and just to kind of follow up on that I, and i know we had some issues on the last redistricting and you know i just didn't want us to get caught you know, without the knowledge of the cause and, the, you know, with the state being involved in the redistricting somewhat, I, I just, I, it became an issue for us. And I, and I just don't know where we are with this. Right and, now. and Mr. Chairman, I'll jump into uh, my AOE presentation a little bit, but um, we have recognizing that, that this potentially could come down the pike. We have already, in fact, we're close to being finished with a match with Metro IT right now. Um, I spoke with uh, Jeremy and staff yesterday, and I think we're like 95% there. After that point, we will seek out direction from the comptroller, try to do a match with them, so that when we go into, if we have to redistrict, um, Metro's files, our files, and the comptroller, we're all in agreement going in. And then we would then do checking after we do the redistricting so that we can make sure that we're all on the same page. 
I just want to make sure I understand. So not included in this would be the cost of printing new voter registration cards for every voter in Davidson County if we had to redistrict. That's correct. That cost is, is not anywhere right now. Uh, for the last, back in uh, May of last year, we spent right at $246,000 printing and mailing um, voter registration cards. Okay. So that cost is going to be there, and we will, we will have that. Uh, and um, we're required to send a new voter registration card to voters if anything changes around their district. Okay, so if the legislation were to pass, it, it says that the fiscal note is nothing, but it sounds like at least for, for us, we, Metro would, somebody is gonna have to pay roughly a quarter of a million dollars to, to reissue those voter registration cards. Right, when I, when I looked at the fiscal note, right now it has Metro having a savings because of the reduced number of council people. Okay. It doesn't speak to us having to send out new voter registration cards. That's something we will have to do, and there's a cost of $250,000 to do that. Okay. Thank you. Um, question. So going back to the uh, GIS issues, um, and I know you said this wasn't on the, the fiscal note either. So where are we in regards to current compliance with not just Metro, but with the state in regards to GIS? You know, we're, we're in compliance. I think one of the things that we've decided to do essentially is before each election, we're going to do a match with our database, Metro GIS, and then if the state will participate, and I assume they will, we'll do a match with the comptroller's office mm -hmm. to make sure that all three of us are on the same page. Okay. Because if you can think about it this way, every time Metro changes the name of a street, every time we tear down a house and build three on that same lot, we have to make sure we've got those recorded correctly in all three spaces. And the only way to do that is if we're on a regular basis doing what they call geocoding. And uh, we've started that process with Metro GIS and are almost finished. So we anticipate we'll be running this by the state so that before we go into, should the, the bill pass and we have to redistrict the council districts, we will know going in we're all in good shape. After we redistrict, we'll do a comparison again. Are we still in good shape? So that everyone can feel good going in that we've done as many checks as are possible and everyone feels confident that the information is correct. Okay. I've, got a, I've got a question. Um, Mr. Roberts, how many how many elections does this budget uh, assume? How many elections does it call? So it it assumes the known elections that are out there. We've got because the fiscal year begins in July. We've got the August, the September, and the March presidential primary. Okay. So that's a minimum, and that's a minimum. It could be more. Could be more, but those are what I would call really unknown at this point in time. We right. we have no real idea if there's going to be another sure. election at all. Okay, that eighty-eight. Let's just assume that we uh, we open early voting full bore, which is the issue before us. That's going to be. Is it going to be 88,000 for every election that we have if we decide to be consistent with that? That would be 88,000 for every election that we have. So 
each of those elections, if you look at that, they're at 1.1 million ballparkish. So those include enough funds right now to be able to do early voting at all for all the sites for all 14 days. If the commission chooses to go with the schedule that we've traditionally used, we will reduce that request with Metro Finance to reflect that 88,000 coming out of each of those elections. So we'll be closer to right at $1 million for each election. Anything else on that topic? All we right. don't need a motion. To no, I don't. Right? I don't think we do. do oh, wait, yes. for the budget? For the budget as yes. a whole, the commission does have to take action. Okay, yes. I'll make a motion to approve the budget as proposed. A second. We have a motion and a second to approve the budget for FY23-24. Um, with, that, with that motion and a second, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? With no opposition, the motion carries. Uh, item 16 is the AOE report. Uh, Mr. Roberts, can you just uh, give us your report and, and uh, hopefully we'll have some questions. Sure. So we've spoken some about our preparation. Um, one to follow up on the issues that we had in November around redistricting, what we've done since then, and how we plan to prepare for elections going forward, where we would, on a regular basis, do a match with Metro G, do a match with Metro GIS to make sure that we have everyone in the correct district, uh, no matter what changes happen throughout the year because while redistricting is a once every 10 year um, issue, we have ongoing every week, every month, things change in Davidson County as far as apartment complexes are built and uh, streets are renamed and uh, changes with a uh, lot line, those kind of things. So we think it's in our best interest if we uh, create a protocol where we do this type of match on a regular basis. That leads into our preparation um, for the potential of uh, the legislature passing a bill to reduce the council. We are... Um, taking steps to prepare. So the agenda you had today where you acted on things uh, all the way out to the September runoff, that's all in preparation so that if as changes are happening, we've got it, as much stuff off your plate now as we can so that you're more easily able to react to any changes that come down the pipe. You'll notice that we did not put on there the date that we will certify the runoff election. That will be up in the air depending on how big the runoff election might be. So, you know, if we only had two offices on the ballot, we, we can probably do it much quicker. Um, so those kind of things are still a little fluid. We've also um, need for the commission um, and to consider when you want to have a meeting in April. We're suggesting on or about April 21st because the new commission will be appointed the 1st of April, we have 20 days to organize. Might be a good idea if you guys go ahead and kind of get that on your schedule and let's just be prepared in the event happens. Like the chairman said, if we need to then have other meetings around that date, you know, we can. Um, 
but all, all of our efforts are to try to get ready uh, and put you in a position to react to anything that you need to do uh, should legislation change the way that we do business here in Metro or across the state. Um, I, I think we're, we think we're in good shape. We have, a, in fact, we have a meeting scheduled after this meeting with the staff where we're specifically going to talk about the petition process that begins the 20th of March. We may or may not know whether or not the legislation is passed, but we need to be prepared to go. Probably we will design a process where we are collecting petitions for the current 35 districts, but come up with a process of how we migrate should the bill pass to only 20 districts. The qualifying deadline is the 18th of May. We have a very short window to get all the new districts drawn, notify the public, get the candidates, make sure they know what district they're running in. So everything we can do to get organized on the front end, that's what we're, we're trying to make happen here, uh, starting today with this commission meeting, really. Questions, concerns? I appreciate all the work on the front end that you all are trying to do to prepare for something that you don't know what it looks like, right? I mean, I think it's really hard to prepare for something and you, you don't know what it looks like. Um, I just want to make sure I understand, and I appreciate the fact that there's all the matching going on after, you know, I think everybody knows we had some significant issues with redistricting last time around um, when, when those changes were made, and now it looks like we're going to have to go through that process again, but probably impacting every voter in Davidson County or pretty close. Um, where before I, I don't necessarily know that it impacted everybody. So I appreciate the fact that y'all are working so hard to check that and check it again and check it, check it, check it again, because we, we all learn, right? As, as we do it more, we learn more. So I appreciate that. Um, I am increasingly concerned, however, about the very, very tight timeline and notifying the public of changes and what your council district is and where you're supposed to vote and who you're voting for and who the candidates are. Um, it seems like that's going to be a significant issue. And I think as we found, um, when changes happen very quickly, people, people the, the royal people, don't necessarily, I think, understand or think about what happens on the ground when voters literally don't know where to go or don't know who they're voting for and and the, the blowback that you get on that. I think it creates voter suppression. I think it undermines um, people's faith in, in elections um, and just creates massive confusion. I don't doubt that we are capable of educating people on those things and, and getting them ready for it, but I mean, between March 20th and May 18th, we don't even know if we'll have an answer then, and that's only eight weeks. Um, there's just, there's, there's really not enough time to get all this done in such a short period of time. I understand that we may not have a choice, but um, the communication aspect of it to the voter and the voter confusion issue is a very significant concern to me, and I, I don't really know what we can do to address it. Has anybody mentioned to anybody, any outside of the, I mean, the commission's gonna be working full bore to get everything done in a short period of time. I, I guess I'm wondering if we know if that legislation happens, has anybody taken responsibility for educating the voters? Do we, I mean, has anybody heard, has anybody thought about it? Do you have information? You know, as speaking for the staff at the commission, we, we're the implementers. We're, you know, we can't really get out there and say a whole lot about 
whether or not we support or don't support right. or any of this stuff because our focus is however it shakes out, how can we be best prepared to pull it off? And believe me, we'll be super busy between now and 1st of May just to get ready. Um, but we, that'll be our focus, and we will pay as much attention and devote as many hours as necessary. Uh, comments this is really to, to your point. And I think you raise a very good point, by the way. Um, spitball. Would it be an interesting thought to maybe consider having someone in charge of communications for that particular part that would work specifically with our election commission and your office specifically to, to be the tip of the spear on that? Um, because if that were to happen, and maybe we can look at it, you know, going forward, that, you know, we put in someone in charge to do that. I mean, with all the digital assets in this, at this time period, it might be very well, you know, a good idea for us to do that. Therefore, it would in turn lead to more voter engagement. It would also head off maybe some other issues that we've had in the past, as well as, you know, especially if this were to happen, by way of the state, I mean, anything we could do to get out in front and, you know, full press our constituents about the changes and engaging them about it, that might be a thought process. You know, I, I anticipate as soon as should the bill pass that the mayor's communication team will be contacting us to try to put forth a coordinated effort because Mayor's office, council, all have a big, you know, stake in this. So they're going to want to play a big role, um, probably even larger than our role. Um, and I would anticipate that they will contact us immediately um, to share a plan as to how they would like to communicate this across all of Davidson County's population. Okay. And that, um and I'm just throwing it out there as, like I said, a spitball. Do we want to at least think about having someone in place within the office, if you will? And I don't, you know, to truly just head that up and or be on top of it. And I'm looking at this strictly from a, you know, making sure that we can address the issue of engaging the public as best as possible, just as a spitball. Right. And right now, today, I would say our person that we have for that would be Lisa. She's the point person with the mayor's office, with the council, uh, does our social media. Um, so I would be leaning on Lisa. In fact, Lisa and I spoke last night about what we were going to be doing. Well, so she, she's, uh, she, she probably won't let this out of this room. Well, then don't uh, take since we're on camera. Or, right. But, uh, you know, she, I contact her at all I hours like of said, the day and night. Well, I said, my, that's, I just wanted to put it out there in public, too, because we wouldn't be doing our due diligence if we didn't make sure we got ahead of as many things as we could. And if, with this potentially coming down the pike, we want to make sure we engage as all the voters we can to make sure that they understand the changes that could very potentially will happen and make sure we do everything we can to empower our voters to do that, which is vote. I think following up on your suggestion, I mean, to me, that's probably as big a piece of the whole process as all of the other things that we need to do to get prepared. So we will be spending a lot of time on that. And if we need more of anything, we'll be coming to the commission, to the council, uh, whoever we need to go to to make sure we educate the public on uh, that's, uh, should my, anything that's happen. That's my concern. Okay, thank you. Just to, just to follow up on these comments, which is really, really great. Uh, and I do know that one thing that we did not talk about, and probably maybe, maybe we shouldn't even talk about it, but it could possibly be pending litigation with this, which will stretch things out further. 
And then we're looking at timetables then. We're looking at, we, we got elections here in June, July, and then this thing get pushed back. I assume we'll get prepared for that if that was the case as well. You know, some of our thoughts uh, over the last couple of days is that we're going to have to be prepared to go potentially in the either direction, either quickly go to a 20 council district or things are delayed and we're still doing the 35. We're, we're going to have to be able to go either way and that's part of our meeting uh, later today is to figure out, okay, which, how do we make that happen? Uh, even on the petition process, how do you, you know, have petitions for 35 districts and 20 at the same time? When you haven't done the redistricting yet. Correct. And, and you know, as I looked at the, the legislation in section C, it says that the, uh, the council should have this done by May the 20th, May the 1st. I mean, that's a quick timetable as you look at all these other things that we've got going. Right. Well, they have to approve the new districts by May 1st. We then have to get them all, all the voters loaded into those new districts so that essentially mid-June is when we send out the ballot. So you're having to figure out who's in what district and make sure they're qualified and all of those kind of things. And just just one more caveat to that, we're looking at the military ballots. Who would, where would they be? Where would, you know, they've got to get, a, they've got a time frame on that. So we just definitely don't want this disenfranchise anybody. And just to follow up on, I think what the others have said, I mean, there's a lot that has to happen. It is very complex in a very, very short amount of time. And I mean, I just want to be really clear that if we're forced to, to do this as, you know, as quickly and, and be as nimble, and I mean, obviously the, the staff is going to do the very best that they can, but I imagine that there will be mistakes. People will be confused. You know, we can do our very best, but stuff's going to happen. And, you know, I don't want that to land at your feet or, um, you know, to our feet when people are doing, you know, the very best they can in a very difficult situation. Um, I wish... I wish we had more time um, to, you know, do this a little bit more orderly and, and give people, you know, time and notice and, you know, time to put it all out there. Um, but absent that, I, I just, I've got grave concerns about um, the timeline and, and the compressed nature of, of what we're being asked to do. Um, you know, last time around we did, we normally only do redistricting once every 10 years. And when we did it last time, you know, that was somewhat compressed um, given litigation and other things. And, and we did see totally unintended, you know, couldn't have anticipated them problems that came up. And I'm just terribly concerned that, you know, that's gonna happen again. And, you know, at a larger scale, cause now we're doing the whole city. Um, I just want to say it. So if something does happen, you know, we can say we had concerns, at least I did. And, you know, these mistakes that could happen and confusion and, and all these things that is anticipated that, I mean, if that's not an unknown, right? Like we know if this legislation is put on this time schedule, that those things are very likely to happen. And I just kind of wanted to say it out loud um, for if and when it does that, you know, we did everything in our power to prevent it. Um, I, I believe that there are supposed to be a series of meetings um, organized by Metro Council in some way to consider this issue about do do we do all this this year? Do we extend everything? All those kind of things. And uh, I think we should try to be involved in those meetings so we will know 
immediately what's going on and have some potential impact if there are things proposed that would be a problem for us. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to try to follow up, but to the extent you all have your contact with Metro Council, let's try to make sure that, that our people are at the table when all this stuff is happening, because it is going to happen pretty quickly. And uh, one thing that I had thought about is possibly the need for us to have more meetings during this process, not so much to vote on things, but to communicate about what's going on with us and to try to communicate to the public as much as we can. So there may be a series of meetings that we have in which we're not perhaps not going to have motions, but just discuss issues and make sure that we know what's going on and that staff communicates with us and that the public knows that we're, we are uh, trying to keep abreast of these issues. So that, that's a few things we can do. Uh, my other thought would be to ask uh, Mr. Roberts whether there's anything we can do in terms of putting information out to the public that we need to be thinking about now uh, as part of this budget as part of planning, uh, we, we, you know, we don't have a big budget item to, uh, you know, for advertisements, et cetera, but is that something we should consider uh, on our behalf or, will, or do we let Metro do it? Uh, I just want to throw that issue out there because it is quite expensive to put ads in the newspaper, et cetera, but but um, we are going to have to deal with the fallout, and it's our responsibility to try to make sure the public knows as much as it can as soon as, as we can do that. So I'm just throwing that out there as a potential issue. And the other thing is that the uh, Commissioner Starling, I think you mentioned litigation, and no question that could happen, and Metro Legal could be representing somebody in that litigation and that may create issues for us so please consider you know your list of potential lawyers we may have to hire our own lawyer if there's issues that arise and metro has got a conflict yeah i'd just like to echo one thing on that um i think um it, it would be helpful i think to know who's going to own what pieces of these communications effort going forward. Um, and I know that maybe some of us, some of Metro, maybe some of Metro Legal, I don't know, but I, I think it'd be helpful to kind of know how that's gonna be rolled out and who's gonna own the pieces to that. Right, right. And, and it seems to me at this point that Metro Council may be more on point or more at issue than the mayor's office. Uh, we probably obviously we need to try to touch both both areas, but Metro Council is the one that's going to have to make these decisions very quickly, I believe. No, and I, I would assume that the the vice mayor will probably take a big role in coordinating between the mayor's office and the council uh, to follow up on your suggestion for information sharing, Mr. Chairman. I think. An example would be once we've figured out how the petition process might work, that you all have a good understanding of that. So if someone calls you, you can share with them because it won't be, I don't think, your traditional way we've done petitions in the past. Uh, it's gonna have to be tweaked, nuanced a little bit so that we can be prepared should things change very quickly on us? Okay. All right. Anything further on that topic? I think that's uh, plenty to swallow sure. right now. Okay. Um, now, we had uh, the commission put on two election integrity seminars. Can you please give the us and the public a report on that? Right. We did uh, offer to both the public and elected officials an opportunity to come 
to our training facility at the warehouse to see the audit process. Essentially, we mimic the process that was required by the state for the election. We let people rerun ballots through a different scanner. We even went a step beyond what's required and had uh, the participants actually do a hand count, count, recount, and compare that to both the original scanner, the different scanner, and the hand count. I think that really opened the eyes for a lot of folks as to how we do it here in Davidson County to give them a little more knowledge uh, about elections and what goes on behind the scenes. All right. Um, uh, Mr. Roberts, is, is the staff preparing a written policy on redistricting so that nine years from now, somebody will be able to pull it off the shelf and and have the benefit of the experience that we had this year. I think uh, recognizing that uh, not having that playbook uh, is probably uh, puts the process at a little more risk than we would like to have. That once we get through with our current matching process and our conversations with the state about how they want to do it going forward, we would incorporate that all of that into a playbook going forward. Okay. You know, one of the things that we have to be aware of, and I'm sure you are, technology is likely to change over the next 10 years, and the whole process could change. But I think it's important for us to document what we experienced and how to avoid those kind of things uh, so that... Uh, if I'm not here 10 years from now, whoever is, is, you know, better informed. Okay. Uh, I've got one other question. To your knowledge, is there anything, uh, and maybe Mr. Starling, uh, who w works up on the Hill, can, can uh, chime in also. Is there anything still in the legislature about runoffs? I had heard at one point there was a bill being considered that would eliminate runoffs in local elections. Is that still in play so far as you know? I hadn't heard anything about uh, potential eliminating runoffs. Okay. Now, I know there was some conversations about, uh, uh, what do you call that, uh, choice rank vote voting? Rank choice voting, yes, yes sir. I think it's been some conversation, but I don't think it's any legislation that I know of that's pending as okay. for eliminating. All right. Okay. And, and the other question I had is, the, or, or comment would be that to the extent that the commissioners and the staff come up with potential legal issues that are going to come out of this, it probably would behoove us to try to gather them and start giving them to Metro Legal. The, the one I had was, is there going to be a charter revision necessary as a result of all of this? And if so, when is that, when could that happen? Because that could require another election. Um, that was the one question I had. There may be others. Right. And, and I'll let the lawyers speak to the new amendment that was put on. But the, the way I read that amendment it gives the council pretty much the, the authority to do whatever they needed to do to set in place the new provision of having 20. Right, but I could foresee somebody making an argument that certain aspects of that affect the charter and that at some point somebody could raise that issue. My sure. gut on this is probably just to wait and see what if anything passes and then kind right. of oh, deal right. with it as it comes. I, I would hate to speculate and kind of get into something as far as I see it, what, whatever happens between the state and Metro and whoever passes whatever they're going to pass, like our job is to kind of do what it says and to get advice from our lawyers if we have a question. But in, right. until then, I kind of feel like we should probably not get involved in the legal stuff. Yeah, and Mr. Chairman, I think 
what's going on now it's the the bill is moving it's moved through all the committees in the house it's on it's set for calendar and rules which calendar rules will set it for the house floor the senate may come up with some amended versions of it they could amend this or they'd add some things and if it's two different versions then you got a conference that would have to come out of it so right now it is what it is what we see now and but it could change it okay. all this could change it okay. as a matter of fact they can even take it off notice if they wanted to but i don't okay. speculate that i mean you got to move forward as if this legislation is going to pass so it, it could change the outlook of it the way it looks right now what we look what we're looking at right now what we've got copies of is what the house version is mm -hmm. and so far everything has been amended to change a few things but it goes to calendar and rules now they can um, do an amendment on the house floor to change some stuff not likely but it's possible so you know right now we we just and i think the staff has done a fantastic job preparing i mean i'm i'm happy glad to see that we're not just standing there in the corner waiting you know davidson county election commission is doing its job i mean we, we will do it our staff is on top for what little we know right now now you know i know this stuff it passed we just got to go and the council's got to re help redraw the lines that's another issue who's going to draw themselves out of this i mean you know we got 40 council members and it's going to go down to 20, so half of them will be gone. So who, I mean, if I were a council person, I wouldn't want to draw myself out. So, I mean, we got that process to go through. So it's a lot more to, to this thing. But I, I'm glad our staff is taking what information we've got, and they've done a great job of preparing. And I really appreciate that. Anything further on the AOE report? No, sir. Ms. Harrison, has anybody signed up for public comment? All right. So let's see. The next thing is that under st state law, the commissioners must review a certain number of registration cards, and we do this every quarter. And that is a that is a check that's built into the state statute so that the commissioners personally review voter registration cards or at least a, a selected sample of them uh, every quarter which is the process that we're doing right now so with that typically we take a break and the commission continues to do that uh, where are we in that process the democrats already finished yeah, we'll be done. Five minutes. Yeah. All right. Okay. So we've got that, and then we still have the agenda item of the pending motion, and we have the selection of the next meeting. Uh, so uh, we'll proceed with the cards, and we'll come back then to item three. Why don't we set the next meeting while we're doing the cards? That's fine. So if it's, I think the suggested date is April 21st, I'm available that date. It's good for me. It's a Friday. April 21st. <clears throat> what about a time? Afternoon. It, are you are you is that three thirty? Is still okay for you? Three thirty is fine. Is that fine for you? Yeah, no, that's fine. All right. April twenty first at three thirty. Yes. Okay. All right. Do we have a motion? Oh, I'll make a motion to set Friday, April twenty first at three thirty for our next meeting. And a second. Second that motion. All right. We have a motion and a second to to uh, set our next meeting for April twenty one, two thousand twenty three at three thirty. And and let me note that doesn't prevent us from having a, a meeting between now and then, but at least we have that marker out there. All right, with that, uh, we'll call a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? With no opposition, the motion carries. 
and uh, we'll let the card counting continue. Can Mr. Chairman, I can give you an update on my conversations with some of the other counties in the state concerning their early voting schedule, if you'd like to hear that now. Yes. So I've talked to Shelby County, Knox County, Hamilton County, Rutherford County, and Wilson County, and they all have their schedule set for all of their sites open all days. What I heard from most of them was that that was easier for the public to understand that they didn't have to qualify that this place was open this day and another one was open another day. Um, so so wh which counties are those? Shelby, Wilson, Rutherford, Knox, Hamilton. And all those are open all the days that have been suggested by the motion? Correct. Okay. And those are the only ones that that I called. I tried to get kind of a mixture of big ones and a couple close by here. So so those five counties do do go to the max? They go to the max. Okay. And they've reported no problems? Right. Their, their comment was that, it, you know, even logistically, it was better for the public because they didn't have to explain why some were open some days and some were open others. So they would stick with that. And do you have a feeling for how many other counties do the same thing? You know, uh, I do not know. Once you get into the smaller counties, uh, they really have different schedules. You know, they may only have one location. So trying to get a representative group of folks that we are kind of like, what was the goal here? You know, comparing us to Obine County and what they do really doesn't sure. m make a lot of uh, headway. I'm impressed you got that many people on the phone that quickly. Well, I do have, what, six people back there giving me phone numbers, so. Great work, guys. We did talk to our locations, uh, and everyone said that they would uh, work with us to make that happen. I will put a qualifier in there on the the why. We're still have we're not going to be able to be in the big room. So us being there the whole time may mean we have a smaller footprint than we have for a bigger election. You know, instead of six people, we have four clerks checking people in because we can't get that many people in the room that we're in. Uh, but uh, right now, uh, it looks like everyone's good to go. I think the only other question maybe you had, Mr. Chairman, was uh, John and the staff. Uh, John, have you had any thoughts, uh, want to come up and share, you know, do you anticipate issues, problems? Can you make it happen? Sure, thank you. So in talking with early voting officers, uh, we are all good to go. Uh, we have one early voting officer who may have to have one day covered, but they're all good for the full two weeks. Um, for the, and that's for the August and September uh, election days. So we were able to get those nailed down. Anything from locations or? Okay. So the officers are our biggest 
you know, they kind of make it happen out there. If uh, John feels like we've got the officers covered, that's a big logistical hurdle. We can fill in with uh, the machine operators and the, the PRs, but the officers are normally our biggest concern. Yeah. So uh, let me mention one more thing here. We did talk some about having to send out uh, voter registration cards should, should the redistricting happen for the council. Um, just want to make sure everyone knows that even though we have 490,000 registered voters, uh, we would only be sending voter registration cards out to about 450 because the others are currently in an inactive status where there's something wrong with their address. Something we sent to them previously was returned as undeliverable by the post office. So just so that you know going in, we would not send uh, another piece of correspondence to someone that we already know the post office can't deliver to. <clears throat> Now that the cards have been reviewed, uh, let's revisit item three, the early voting schedule and locations for the August 3rd election. I, I think we took a recess to allow some of the commissioners to do some homework. Um, let me ask this question. Uh, are, are, the, are any of the commissioners, do any of the commissioners uh, need more time? at this point um i'll say this like i said i reached out to a couple council members who i have not heard back from since that was something that came up um from the other commissioners i did actually call out to knox as well as shelby county so i guess you beat me to it because they didn't call me back so i wanted to say the power of the aoe must have been pretty good um because i have not that personal phone it must be because i said i called and I got, I got the, I was getting the, we'll send you a message back. So from their office staff, um, since you brought, the, my concern is this, let me just put it out there. Since you said there was issues, you know, let me rephrase that. Since you said that there were a number of people from city council who made an issue of it, you know, like I said, I, I threw out some calls and then the little touch site break we had, and of course, sometimes getting certain council members is a little hard for whatever reason, their work and whatever else. And so nobody has gotten back with me now. I will also fall in the sort of my cell phone service in, the, in this room does not do very well either. So like, there could be a rec return call on my phone. Um, that's with, with the information they provided. That's my only outstanding concern. I mean, like I said, and that's just for me doing my own homework. I don't, you know, if I call, you know, my you know, city council member, which I did call, you know, to start with, I was the first person who got the first call. I was like, you know, I at least want to at least have that conversation. Because when I see him down the street, that's, you know, I don't want to be like, hey. But, you know, this seems like the other logistical issues have been satisfied to that part of the discussion. I think the fact that there's consensus with Knox and Hamilton and um, Shelby County, I think that that bodes well for for us. Commissioner Davis, are, 
Are you comfortable with voting on this at this point? I'd vote on it. Okay, all right. With that, it sounds like we're ready to vote. Uh, we have a motion pending. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? With no opposition, the motion carries. Thank you. So we have one more item on the agenda. Whoops. Number 10. Wait. You've got to do the oh, goodness. schedule for the runoff. Okay. All right. I will make a motion for the September runoff in the event that it happens. We have all early voting locations open all 14 days. That's my motion. Okay. So, so, so it would be the same as, as what we just voted on for yep. item three. Yes, sir. And it would be the same as number 10 on our schedule, but with the increased hours and locations, et cetera. Yes. Okay. All right. Is there a second? A second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? With no opposition, the motion carries. Motion to adjourn. Right. Second that. All right, we have a motion to adjourn and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 No opposition, the motion carries. Thank you. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.